so beautiful. He is the general overseer of Turning Point Ministries International, with headquarters in Accra, Ghana. A man called and specially anointed to set the captives free, an apostle of deliverance, an outstanding teacher and preacher in spiritual warfare, spanning over ten years in the deliverance ministry, with undeniable testimonies, signs and wonders. A man whose ministry has seen him widely traveled and ministers in global stations in Ghana and on the internet. He is the author of the bestseller, Overcoming the Giant in the House. As marriage counselor, his practical teaching on marriage has transformed many homes. And now, in the power and might of the Holy Ghost, let us receive Reverend Chris Gaba. Hello, wonderful listeners. Welcome to another interesting session of the program Wind of Deliverance brought to you by Turning Point Ministries International. Today, I want you to sit back, relax, and enjoy this wonderful interview because there's something interesting, mind-blowing. Just relax. We have in uh, uh, on my left, I have a, a, a brother here. I will not mention his name for some severe reasons. Later on, we'll get to know him better. Then on my right-hand side, I have with me my senior pastor, Reverend Chris Garba, who is the general overseer of Turning Point Ministries International. Uh, some time ago, something wonderful happened that has triggered this interview this very day. Hallelujah. And I have my brother here who used to be an occultist. Let's think carefully. He used to be an occultist. He used to be the kingdom of darkness. He was initiated into the marine kingdom. And he was also a malam. And he's now a converted, he's now a born again child of God. He's worshiping with us at Turning Point Ministries International. He's now a changed person. Hallelujah. How did you get initiated into the occultic kingdom in the very first place? Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity that I would like to let people in this country, especially the youth, to understand that the devil is real. I started the malam, this malam things, because my daddy was a malam himself. So when he died, I took over. I was doing people comes to me, pastors, oh, a lot of Big, big men have been coming to me with spiritual problems and I've been doing for them. It is working, these Sakawa boys. You will see young boys, 13 years, 12 years, are having the zeal to have money. But I never knew until I get born again that the devil gives nothing for free. You see, what the devil does is he will give you what you want and then he will take what he wants. And what, you want, uh, what he takes from you it's more precious than what he is giving to you. It is to the Malam. You inherited yeah. it from yeah, your from father. The side. To, okay. Uh, but tell us about the occultic yeah. kingdom and the Malam kingdom. The occultic kingdom, oh. it was a friend of mine who introduced me into this group. It started when I was in senior high school. I will not mention the, the name of the school, but um, this guy used to do wonders. And so far as I'm a spiritual person, I said, no, there is something behind this guy, the, the way his movement, there's something, there's some, some kind of power behind his movement. So I call him one day and ask him, that Charlie, what's up? These days, in fact, you are behaving some ways. I love it, man. So how do you do your things? And then he started uh, 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 giving me some guidelines. I, I should bring, uh, I should go and buy an apple, bring it, and he would do something for me. So I went and buy the apple. The next day, I bring it, he ate it first, and then give me some. I also took it, and that was all. So I went to sleep, and I saw a giant man, very, very thick tall, appeared, and then was asking me, how, why, 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 why should I call him? What is the reason for me calling him? I said, ah, how come I called you? I don't know what you are talking about. He said, by the apple you eat, that is how you called me which means uh, 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 the guy has already initiated me into the group. By taking the apple. Yeah. Okay, so that is how, the devil. Yes, so that is how it started. Okay. Uh, yeah. Prophet, there, there is something remarkable that a uh, gentleman, a brother said. He said in the first place that the devil is real. And you have been a deliverance minister. We come on Friday, we are always here breaking, losing. Even sometimes on Sunday, we are praying, we are casting out. And something, oh, we, 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 are, we are just fanatics, we are doing certain things that we do. You have been in the deliverance ministry for some time now. He being an occultic, a malam, talking about the reality of the devil. 
Can you tell us something about that? Yeah, I believe strongly that uh, anybody listening, uh, wind of deliverance is not to scare people, as I always say, but to give people knowledge. Because where in the area where you have knowledge, the enemy is not able to manipulate in that area. You see, he did not have knowledge. Because if he had knowledge then, he would have known that the apple was a means of an altar that was raised. And also as a means of a token of a covenant. You understand? Uh -huh. There are people who have, have the idea, as you said, that they feel we are fanatics. We are just putting fear in people. But you see, one thing about the deliverance ministry, uh, ministry is that until you have experienced it yourself, you have been through something before, you will not know that it is real. You will think that, oh, we are just wasting our time praying, losing. But it is something that is real, that really exists. You understand? So uh, it is not a joking matter. To what he says is very serious. Because the, just by the apple, it's a token. You understand? And they were able to have access to him and come to his room. Amen. So his spiritual things are real. And you've been talking about covenants also, ways yeah. by which we can enter into covenant unknowingly yeah. with the evil one. Thank you very much. How did you initially get to know of Turning Point Ministries International? Thank you very much. Before I will answer this question, I wanted to say uh, something about because I was serving three kingdoms. Okay. Yeah, that is the Malam, Okotik, and the the Marine, the Marine world. For under the sea, people have been talking about Maram, blah blah blah. She's fish. She's what what what. But Mar Marine, she's not a fish. She had human nature. Yeah, and she looked so beautiful. So one day, let me go straight to the point. I was in my room for, for going, I was living under the sea for three years. Nobody take me there. If I still living there, it's not my soul going there. My, my, my whole body, I was living there, my whole body, okay. under the sea for three years. And nobody introduced me there. The Marine came by herself. She said, when she appeared, she showed me money. She showed me cars which means some of these machines, some of these hammer and cars we have been seeing, these big, big taps, most of them are from under the sea world. And then through the sex we have, she took me there, and then that is how it started. So concerned about the question you asked me, how I got, uh, uh, what, what is happened called? Or how uh, you got to know of the ministry, how you came? Actually, I was not coming to listen to any preaching. When I enter into my room, I, we were given a, a mission to accomplish or to achieve. That is by bringing a virgin, yeah, to sacrifice. Because they set a rank for us that if you are able to mount that rank, you can other money, whatever, whatever your heart desire can, uh, can command it and it will just appear for you. So that was what we are uh, fighting for. So when I enter my room, I was chanting and then trying to find a location where I can go and get in the virgin without being, find myself in trouble. So, what I was doing, and then some, I tuned my radio, I don't know, it, uh, uh, somebody was preaching, I didn't take my mind there. But, whilst the person was preaching, I was also chanting, chanting, nothing is happening. I said, ah, what is happening? So, I want something to say, no, off the, the radio. radio. So, I want to put the radio off. And I came back, I was chanting, Kabacha, Kabacha. Making my duas several times, but nothing is functioning. Okay. Everything was silence. So there, I said, no, I don't understand. So I also got annoyed. I, I decided to just rest more and then think of, find the reason why the, I'm calling my duas, calling, chanting, and nothing is happening. So whilst I was resting, it's like I'm sleeping. There, somebody appeared to me and was rebuking me of what I'm doing. Who are you to take somebody's life? Who are you to kill? Do you know why the reason why I created man upon all that? So I got up and the person was still preaching. So I, 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 I took one of the, the contacts and that is how it started. So when I came here, what makes me to believe that turning point ministry, God is here. When I came, I saw white people that you were Narrated, narrated to me that they are angels. angels. That's the first thing I saw. I saw white people. And then when I enter, I say, no, here I will be saved. At church. Okay. Yeah. 
So that is how it started. Let, let, let me ask this very important question, uh, Prophet. You, you've, been, you've been blessing people week in, week out through your radio ministry, Wind of Deliverance. Let me ask, why Wind of Deliverance? You know, every, every uh, man of God with the commission God has given to them. You understand? Uh -huh. And for so many years, those who have known me, I have been focused, I've been talking about deliverance because, you see, as I said earlier, until you have, I, most of the things I teach about are my life story. You understand? You can never talk about something when you have not been through it yourself. Exactly. You, you get me? Uh -huh. So when we talk about wind of deliverance, it's a program that God laid upon our hearts as a church and myself, that as people listen, even just by listening, you know, you have been receiving some of the calls. You know, some people will even be listening, they will enter a trance, and God will start revealing things to them. You understand? There and there, as they are listening to Wind of Deliverance, yeah. people listen and they are crying, and they are, you could see that deliverance is taking place even as they are listening. Yeah. You get me? Uh -huh. You have countless of testimonies. Yeah, I ask this because yeah. he said when you, when you were preaching, yeah. I believe it's a, as a result of the power of God, he said he went to his room purposely to chant, yeah. but there was nothing happening. That was why I asked you why Wind of Deliverance. Yeah. Yeah, there are countless of uh, testimonies about people who are, were listening to Wind of Deliverance where they had instant deliverance as they were listening. Okay. You understand? So it, it, the purpose of Wind of Deliverance is to bring one knowledge mm -hmm. about the enemy. Because, you see, it is not enough to say, in the name of Jesus, come out. What are you telling to come out? Do you even have knowledge? What are you breaking? You see, there are so many churches, we are breaking and losing. Nothing is working. Because until you get the right knowledge and you apply the right knowledge, you will just be breaking, losing, and nothing will be happening. Because the enemy you are fighting, huh? he knows you. He knows even Jesus even more than you. You understand? Mm -hmm. So when you don't have knowledge, you understand, and you are just breaking and losing, you are just, it's like you are just making noise. Like the sons of Skiba. They went, they wanted to cast out the demon, and the demon beat them because they didn't have the right knowledge. You, you get me? So, wind of deliverance is to give people knowledge and also to bring deliverance to people because mm -hmm. in this end time, you could see somebody who is drinking, somebody smoking, somebody leading, okay. I am telling you, it's not that they want to drink. Mm. It is not that they want to smoke. Mm. That is what we're turning point we are about. Because mm. telling a drunkard is a drunkard doesn't solve his problem. He wants solution. Mm. There are things that are controlling their lives. That is why they are drinking. Mm. There are things that are controlling their lives. That is why they are smoking. Mm. That is why things are not going the way they want it. Mm. So when deliverance is coming, it is to liberate the person mm. so that he can come to his subconscious mind and know that, ah, Am I the one drinking? Am I the one smoking? Am I the one living that kind of life? Mm. You, you, you get me? Exactly. Uh -huh. mm. Well, viewers, yeah, you are you are listening to Wind of Deliverance, or you are watching Wind of Deliverance, brought to you by Turning Point Ministries International. It is an interesting and wonderful edition of the Wind of Deliverance program on your channel. And it's a wonderful interview we are having. I have on my right side my senior pastor, Reverend Chris Gaba, who is a prophet, who is the general overseer of Turning Point Ministries International. And I have on my left side a, a man who initially used to be an occultist. He was initiated into three kingdoms, very three powerful kingdoms, an occultist, and into the marine kingdom, as well as a malam. He heard a senior pastor preaching. He came over for his deliverance. He gave his life to Christ. Now he is a born-again child of God. He worshiped always with us. A turning point ministries international, and he has willingly want to share with everyone wherever you are listening, you are watching us from his experiences on the other side. And we've been asking him a series of questions. I believe those of us who have been watching from the onset, you are enjoying it, Sam. You are getting knowledge from whatever senior pastor and our dear brother is sharing. And I was asking him when he came over because turning point ministries is a deliverance based ministry. As my, my senior pastor rightly said, we've been commissioned in the area of deliverance. When you came over, you said you saw some people in white attack. Continue. When you came over that Sunday morning, tell us, continue for us. Before the pastor called me in front to pray, when he was praying for me, I saw two people. Okay. Somebody, one was putting on very dark garment, and the other two is putting on white garment. Okay. Very bright. And the one putting on the white garment asked me a question. 
That because, was in the course of the yeah, deliverance. Yeah, because the one putting on the dark garment was squatting. Jesus. But the one putting on the white garment brightening was standing. Mm -hmm. And there was a gap between us. Okay. Very, very big gap. Mm -hmm. So the one putting on the white garment asked me a question that um, now I have seen the difference. He standing and then the one squatting. The one in black. Who is who? Okay. And who, 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 who will I go to? I have to, uh, to, to decide. You to have the decide. power yes. to decide. Yeah. So when I look at the one squatting, being in dark, I say, no. If you have been a good person, why should you be putting on dark, being in darkness and squatting? Which means the one standing and brightening. He is powerful than you being put on the dark and squatting. Amen. You are powerless. So I take the decision. And then a very uh, strong wind okay. blew me to... Uh, the side, the other side, where the other one was putting on the, the man white. In white. Yes, okay, that's the wind pushed me there, and that's how it started. And therefore, when the pastor was pre uh, praying, praying for me, certain things were coming up for me because I could remember when I was 12 years of age, my father gave me a life chame chameleon. Okay. I swallow it, and right. that was the first thing which came out for me. Okay, yeah. the chameleon and then, and then, in the spirit. Yes. So during your deliverance, yes. from there, that is, that is where I, I got my deliverance. Okay, uh, let me let me ask this very important question. Although I was here, uh, man of God, there are a lot of men of God around. We talk about the power of God, the power of God. But this very brother of ours has been at the other side. Three kingdoms: Marine Kingdom, the Okoti Kingdom, and as well as a Malam. What what was the age? What made you to deliver him wasn't that that fear in the let me ask this because when he came even before his testimony i could see some of the church members they, they some had even moved from their seats because he came you came with some of your your things uh, you came with yeah, yeah. Uh, certain things i used to chant and certain yeah. signet and ring but man of god tell us what really made you take that bold step to deliver this brother be very sincere uh, that, that night before, the Lord spoke to me and said, there's going to be a higher power that's going to come, you know, to the church. And he was going to use me to deliver him, the person. But I wasn't sure who, whether the person was a male or a female. So that week, I've been meditating about it because I don't know who is coming. But the Lord said to me, there's going to be a higher power. I'm going to test your ministry. You understand? Aha. Uh -huh. So that Saturday, I, one of the pastors, he called, one of my pastors, uh, Pastor Nat, he called me and said, this is what is happening. And the brother, he has encouraged the brother to come and see us. Without so, telling you. No, I mean, on Saturday, he told me okay. that the guy will be coming on Sunday. So then I confirmed that this is what God was telling me during the week, that there's going to be a higher power that's going to come. And I'll be preparing towards that. You see? It's not everybody that is commissioned into these things. I remember one powerful woman of God we invited here years some time ago. She was telling me, man of God, for me, God hasn't called me to deliver. Because this work we do is life and death. If you have not been called into it, there are some pastors who have come here, have delivered them because, uh, because they did deliver for somebody and there was a transfer and since then their problem started. So it's not everybody that have been called into the deliverance to deal with issues like this. Some are pastors. If you're a pastor, just stick to your pastor and pastor. If you're an evangelist, stick to it and do it. If God hasn't commissioned you, and I'm speaking to my fellow pastors out there, if you are not commissioned to do it and somebody comes, tell the person to come to turning point. Don't try to force yourself and do it and bring problems upon yourself. Because not everybody that has been commissioned for this work, you understand? Uh -huh. Some have been just been commissioned to just see. I, they just will see that this is the problem, but they don't have a solution. They can't help you. That's you understand? Right. So uh, the Lord spoke to me about it, and I knew that, you know, uh, something like that was going to happen. Yeah. God bless you. Uh, my, my dear brother, you brought some of your elements, and I, I saw the, the prophet of God pouring an anointing oil on it, and you were saying that certain things were happening, certain things were going out, out from your body. Tell us, we want to know the, the, the nitty-gritty, the details. What do you see? Because I believe it may be between you and, and the prophet of God. You, may, you were seeing certain things in the spirit, but to the members, those of us around, we were not seeing what was really happening. Because I believe during the deliverance, it was power versus power. Hallelujah. It was the kingdom of, 
of darkness versus the kingdom of light. What were some of the things that you saw? And how can you tell our viewers, those who are watching us, those who are listening, tell us some of the things that happened? Yeah, this is a wonderful question. You see, um, before the man of God lay his hand upon my head to pray for me, the difference between these powers is that the one, the power that is ruling me, subject to the power that is ruling the pastor. Amen. Yeah. So that it is the difference. So the one in me subjected to the one in the pastor. And then during the, the prayers, so many things were going on. But I want to let you know, if you want to see more things, if you want to know that the devil lives and deliverance are in this ministry, I just want to uh, uh, encourage somebody to just take a step and come. If maybe you are in this kind of lesbianism and this homosexuality, because that is what, what is happening under the sea world, these kind of things. So if somebody you are in this kind of, don't think it's a friend who initiated you into this group. Thank you very much. for. Amen, that. amen. Uh, viewers, you are by Turning Point Ministries International. If you just tune in onto your television set, I have with me on my right side, my senior pastor, Reverend Prophet Chris Gaba, who is a general overseer of Turning Point Ministries International, located within the NBTI school premises, Kukumlimli, near ATTC, or behind a busy internet. And we are having a wonderful interview with our brother, a dear brother, who used to be an occultist, also was initiated into the Marine Kingdom, and also a malam. And now he has given his life to Christ. When he came over, he had a prophet of God preaching on radio. He came over and he sealed his deliverance. He is sharing with us a reality of the devil, things that happen in the marine world and in outside world, things that are happening. But I want to ask the prophet of God. During the deliverance and after the deliverance, we conducted a series of deliverance after the initial deliverance for our dear brother. We even went further for a foundation school Bible class for him. And even we kept on encouraging him to come to seal his deliverance. I've seen you delivering people and encouraging them to stay under covering when they come so that they can seal their deliverance. Some have asked, deliverance, is there a one-off process when you come, you get your deliverance? Or it takes time for you to de be delivered? You have been in the deliverance ministry for some time. Can you tell us something about it? It depends on your problem you brought. You understand? And there are some issues that are very serious, like his own. You can't deal with it in one day. It's a, it's, a, it's a gradual, it's a process. You understand? Because before his initiation, right from the age he called 12 years. 12 years. Imagine, uh, now that he's old. You see, so the, the devil did not use one day. So the same way, when it comes to deliverance, it is a gradual thing. That's why we encourage all our visitors who come here that at least our programs, you should be very, so that you can sustain the deliverance. You know, I went to preach somewhere, I'll not mention the name. I entered the church and I saw, which is in the choir, I saw some of the prayer warriors who were smaller demons, agents, you understand? And I was about to speak and the Lord said to me, don't speak. If the pastor cannot pray for God to open his eyes, let him die. Mm. You know, in his, in his ignorance. You see, there are so many churches that are not growing. There are so many things because we have keeping the enemy a gateway to easily manipulate. You know, he was sharing about uh, a sister who, if he could buttress on that quickly for us, a sister who came to a church, and any time the pastor releases the blessings. Yeah, yeah, because... You know, so it, it is real. Yes, you, 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 you've been telling us that in the end time, demons, witches, they don't fear to come into the house of God. Yeah. And you were sharing with us some time ago that... There was even a sister who was an agent who was swallowing the blood. Can you throw more light on what you were sharing with yeah, us? Yeah. There was this beautiful lady who was a, is it an auction or something? Is Osha, it, uh, yeah. yeah. In a church. She was given two years. Then before that two years will end, she should be able to turn up all the members to become this kind of homosexuality, lesbianism. Not only to receive, to call, uh, I mean, to, to swallow, the blessing. swallow the blessing alone. But that was the, the mission she, she, she was sent into that church. She was beautiful, very, very beautiful, humbly. Oh, if the pastor is coming, you hold the Bible and then doing mellow down. Yeah. No knowing this lady is from under the sea. Uh, under the sea. Under the sea. Yeah, the head was a snake. Mm. So the, the pastor said, 
receive your blessing, then the head will just come out and swallow everything. Mm. Do you know the reason why she's doing that? So that the members will say, receive, receive, receive for how many years now? Anything. The pastor is powerless. Jesus. Mm. So they are getting knowledge. The one, one of the, they are getting knowledge, yeah, and that's so, the essence of wind of deliverance. Yes. We've also been talking a lot about the marine kingdom. A senior pastor has launched a book dealing with the spirit of Dagon. In just a few minutes, I want Papa to throw more light on why a spirit dealing with the spirit of Dagon. For us, the spirit of Dagon is a Dag Dagon simply means a memory spirit. Okay, you understand? And it is a god of the Philistine they worshipped. Okay, now my brother will tell you that when we talk about the marine kingdom, it is a kingdom like how we have earth. You understand? When you go to the marine kingdom, like how we have buildings, we have disco, we have you see everything there, they also have things like that. You understand? And even they are, it is more beautiful than earth. When you, I promise you, if you go under the sea, you may never like to come back. Because of the things that are there, you see. You see that there are some beautiful cars that are yet to come on earth. They are there. They are, when we talk about women, I sometimes laugh when somebody says, you know, I told you, every year over 5,000 demons from the marine world are released, both men and women, okay, onto this earth. And their essence, their assignment is to perverse and, you know, bring sexual business. Mm. You see this uh, dance they bring into the church. Mm. Uh, they call some of them are going to mm. Jerusalem. Mm. You know, all these things, the latest perfume, the latest car, I am telling you, mm. we need to descend as Christians. Mm. Jesus. You understand? Because most of the things that we use are polluted. That is why they can easily have access to you. You understand? Okay. There are certain, why is it that there are some idols? You need to spray some perfumes to be able to attract them. Mm. You see, they, they call them uh, mm. they, they, There's some powder they have to use to come. Because those things are polluted. Jesus. You understand? Mm. So once they're able to use it, they're able to chant and they, those things come. Okay. So it is very, very crucial and important that we need to discern the times as, as Christians. Okay. You understand? That you can be in a church for 10 years if God hasn't opened the man of, the, the man of God's eyes, as he said. You can be there. The church is a powerful. You That's why I said that if you gather a big crowd, it doesn't mean that God is there. God is there. The devil is not moved by your crowd that you have people plenty. Mm. It's not moved at all. Mm. You understand? Yeah. So it is very, very important that we understand these kingdoms we are talking about, yeah. this marine kingdom, how they operate, and, and most of the things he, he okay. talked about. Okay. My brother, thank you very much, Pastor. My brother, quickly, your new life. Now, you believe you are born again. Christ has saved you. Tell us your new life in Christ, your experience. Okay, let me say American. something small about what uh, the man of God just said. In fact, truly, he's a man of God. Mm. He can see far. Mm. The things he's saying now are what is happening under the sea world. Mm. Yeah. So there is a reason why God delivered me from the kingdom of darkness. Is, exactly. I don't know the reason, but I know there is a reason why. Mm. Some of those we were in this occultism, some of them are dead, about three of them. Jesus. One was rushing to water region, but he's mm. dead. Mm. So when I got here and I'm saved through the teachings, mm. you people are teaching me foundation, foundation and then I'm, I'm now, I've now seen different things. You see, I've now realized that God is not interested of you making you rich. But God is interested of you get getting you to heaven. Your salvation. That's, that is what God God matters most. Mm -hmm. Not not you having cars, having money, mm -hmm. but where one day when you when you die, where you go. So I thank God very much that uh, I, I, I'm Amen. saved. Amen. Yeah. Viewers, you are still on the wind of deliverance. This is an interview, a wonderful edition brought to you by Turning Point Ministries International. I believe our numbers are rolling on the on the screens. You can pick any of our numbers and call us. Make a date with us. Try and come and see the man of God. If you can't come to church and you want to see the man of God personally, we can make time for you. Just pick any of our numbers. Call and book an appointment with the man of God. Finally, what will you tell viewers who are watching us and people all over this world who are watching us on this network? What can you tell them? Especially the youth. I just want to let them know that in everything you do, in everything you do, Remember, you pay for it one day. Mm. It is better for you to take the decision and come to uh, Turning Point Ministry and just have your deliverance, get your deliverance, and then live a life for Christ. Truly, God is real. Mm -hmm. The devil is real. Mm -hmm. 
if you are in this kind of perdition, troubles, this kind of, just come to Venus, uh, just come to uh, turning point, turning point ministry, and, and, God bless and you'll be safe. Thank the you. salvation, very important. Man of God, quickly, what do you have to tell viewers who are also watching us? You have been blessed by your messages each and every week. Wind of deliverance, what can you also tell well, I viewers? I would encourage them to uh, take a step, especially uh, in our all night uh, Friday miracle meetings. Mm. They should call us, we will pray for them. They should take a step and come. You know, just calling and asking for prayer is not enough. Mm. Come and come and experience the power mm. in this house, mm. and your life would never, right. never be the same. We we'll encourage all of them to come. Thank you very much. Uh, viewers, this has been a wonderful edition of. The Wind of Deliverance brought to you by Turning Point Ministries International. And we've had knowledge. Bible says, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. We believe you've gained a substantial amount of knowledge, which will help you. If it's in the area of deliverance, make sure you don't miss our numbers because the prophet has been commissioned into the area of deliverance. God bless you all. We'll meet again next week. God bless you. You make my life so beautiful. Thanks for making time with us on Wind of Deliverance. For more information, contact us on 0209-110931 or 0242-301190, 0209-110931 or 0242-301190 or visit us on Facebook, Wind of Deliverance. You could email us on chrisgarba50 at yahoo.com. We are located at Kokomimli within the NVTI premises near ATTC behind Busy Internet. Tune in same time next week. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. There's nothing greater than